demonic angel uh, real quick. I, you could probably hear my living room fan above me that has been quite noisy lately, but I need the light that it gives on. Uh, it's not as, like a fan where I can just turn the fan off and leave the light on. Um, you know, then the other noise there's an, uh, behind me is uh, the kitchen sink is um, we have one of those uh, RO systems and it, you know, it's draining water to clean it now. So I uh, can't really help that that does that randomly actually. So, well, you know, just in case, you know, you're wondering, get that out of the way. Uh, today will be a review of a place that I went with my husband about, about two weeks ago, week and a half. Um, so it, this was a uh, Harbor Freight in Apache Junction, Arizona. As I understand, um, it's like a, a large uh, chain, retail chain. Um, so uh, my husband has looked into various, you know, uh, reportedly haunted locations and um, you know, he's been taking me there. We've been doing this a couple of times, you know, uh, on, on a regular basis. And uh, I was just like, I have no knowledge of this place, like a hardware store. Because, um, you know, I knew we were going to go to a place that, that, you know, should have some kind of energy, some story. Uh, but I was like, okay, we are, we are going to a hardware store. It's a fairly big building, um, and of course, like, like right up at the front is the cashiers, and then it's all the different aisles. Um, and then the, in the back, in the corner of the store is the restrooms. And then like behind that, you know, you can see that it's like a warehouse kind of a situation, and it's, um, I mean, it's mostly what I surmise where employees are, you know, working uh, after hours uh, to, uh, you know, get, get what they need to get done before the store opens. So that was just kind of like a basic um, layout, you know, good sized hardware store, probably smaller than Lowe's or, you know, um, Home Depot. But, but still very, very good sized place. So um, that's kind of the layout for y'all. Um, knew no nothing about it, but uh, oh, right when I walked in, I started to feel um, like that feeling like you're being watched, like something is off. Um, it just, I ended up browsing up and down the aisles and um, what I was able to, you know, see was this um, this man, deceased man, um, and he had one of those um, old timer hats on. He used to like to wear his backwards, so you would, you know, see the front of it with the buttons on the hat, the cap, um, and he had like a a buttoned shirt, uh, like, and he had cigarettes and and um, glasses in it, in his little front pocket there. Um, and, you know, I got enough detail to tell, like, that, I mean, the chronic smoking really made his skin very um, wrinkly, leathery, and um, that he also wore um, boots or hard, really hard shoes. Um, and, I, like I saw him through a different aisle kind of in my mind's eye and uh, I was thinking is this you know other people see him like this but I don't really think that he actually wants to show himself to, to living people I think that um, he really wants his privacy and he wants it respected 
Um, he's not afraid to do these, do various things to, to voice his displeasure. But, um, yeah, I do think the employees see him. I think they see um, these little glimpses of him, and it's very quick, like, he, you know, here he is in, in his little um, checkered shirt, hat, boots, jeans, and now he's gone. And um, uh, even when we were walking around, it got pretty cold, like, it, and it, this is summer um, in Arizona, so it was like, I mean, it could have been the air conditioner gust or whatever, but it was a cold that made me feel drained, like, like you work so hard or whatever and you sit down and, and then you're like, where did three hours go? Because you're just so drained. And you didn't do anything except really, like, stare at, the, at you know, the TV, but you didn't engage any of it. It's like, where did the time go? Like, kind of, you're so drained. That's the way I started to feel. And then I started to feel nauseous. And um, so when I was trying to figure out, you know, the, the good couple questions, like, who is this guy? Why is he here? Um, when I try to focus um, on his death, I think that um, that he had like a like a heart attack. Um, and I say that because I think he had had several, at least a few heart attacks in the you know prior years leading up to his death. Um, because it's like, and you know, he when I kind of get this information from him, it's like the doctors are telling him, hey, you need to uh, slow up on the smoking or you could have another heart attack. And he, that's not what he's going to do. So he keeps smoking. And um, he, he knew, I guess what I'm saying is he knew that it was what, what was happening to him. And um, he wasn't too far away or whatever, and he retreated into the men's restroom. And I took him a while to kind of die, like 10, 15 minutes. Um, no one, ch you know, checked on him or whatever. And he, um, I mean, he knew he was going to die. He was in, he was in pain. And uh, that that was it, dying at the hardware store. So... Um, I do think that he at least had a wife who was alive at the time that he died. Um, just because when I kind of am him, there's a lot of memories like that. And I also would, if I would place him, I would say, I would say... like mid 80s maybe even a little bit earlier we could go back late 70s no later than that but um probably the farthest out i would go would be like 1990 of when i believe this guy died um you know so so it's been a long time and um I think he also he was in his 80s. I mean, he ma he made it well past his 80th birthday despite his uh, smoking, and um, so you know this this all wasn't too big of a surprise to him. So then I started to focus on, um, and of course the nausea, this the kind of sweating, I, those symptoms I experienced. That you know that definitely helps me believe that he did have a heart attack. Um, I think that for a long time he was trying to just scare people because he wanted the, the restroom, the men's restroom, for himself. He, uh, you know, he just woke up there dead and he didn't really know what else to do and he just wanted people out of his space. 
and he, he really retreated to the restroom. So um, then he, he really figured out how he could um, scare some people at night who, who work or when there's fewer people, um, employees, and he would just um, drain them. He would just stand, get really close, you know, he's been dead so long and he can just drain the energy and that leaves this really cold, I'm talking like almost 20 degree um, temperature differences because he's literally drain picking and it's usually what the way this guy does this is he picks one person and like in this case associate uh, and he drains them and he drains them to the point where he real realizes that they're weak and then he moves on to doing this to somebody else it's very very cold and people don't notice when it's happening it's really just that they'll you know you'll be completely fine and then it's like you're so drained like you just got over the flu or you know you'll go home and you'll be like very pessimistic in, instead of a happy person if you normally are. So um, in that kind of way, he's not really following people home, but he is influencing people. I mean, especially like we said, the people who work there. He's not really interested in customers because uh, he what, likes to study and watch the people in his environment before he picks who he's going to get energy from. Um, what he does with this energy is, is uh, I mean, I think he locks doors. I think he does move objects and, um, you know, like throw things off shelves. You know, somebody stock a shelf and they'll turn around and, uh, you know, a few things will be out of place. And it's like, what? I just did that. You know, I just fixed that all up. So, uh, I, but... One of the, and you know, some of the other information I got, I think he was a uh, military gentleman, possibly Navy. And that was his, you know, he was really, really proud of that. Um, I really didn't get too much more information about him other than I don't think he, he, he wasn't from like Arizona. Um, so, you know, probably came out here um, to retreat from the cold weather, you know, the heat is less hard on the body of people who have, like, arthritis. Uh, I think he is, though, slowly fading. Um, you know, his ego is dissolving, just like at the last place we talked about. Uh, he, even though he really kind of mastered how to drain people of energy, um, it's just been such a long time, and it's like he doesn't belong stuck in in this limbo anymore. So I do think that he he does try to hold on to it, but the things you know that he physically does they happen less and less. I would say I mean I still got that feeling. Um, I know that you know other people get that feeling, like even customers, the foreboding someone is watching you, somebody does not watch you um, in the store feeling, uh, that's still there, but he is, um, you know, he's being dissolved by the elements because it's been a really, really long time. And he hasn't, you know, him draining people, it really hasn't accomplished much. Um, so it's kind of like he's quietly fading away into the you know, eternal void. Um, but, uh, you know, hey, in five years from now, I don't even think that that you could call this place haunted. Um, I think that he, he will be completely gone. I, I don't, I wouldn't recommend trying to move him on or, you know, and, and anger him, engage him in any way, because this process is really going smoothly. And, um, there's no reason to to intervene, just that um, 
if anybody's watching this, hey, you work at that place and you feel that way, you know, do some protection uh, before you, um, before and after work. Carry a lucky charm or re relig re religious medallion and just um, keep that uh, keep that protection from yourself to you know keep him from draining you uh, take lots of breaks and things like this so uh, this is my re review of Harbor Freight Tools in Apache Junction Arizona I did go there with my husband but um, you know for many reasons like my channel content I didn't um, do that um, I didn't, you know, film at on location. However, um, the next video I have like this, where I, you know, do my psychic thing, that that will actually be, we'll film it. Um, it might be outdoors, but either way, I'm totally promising that the next one will be on location. So, um, you know, let me know what you think. If you work there, if you, if any of this helps you out. Um, just let me know in the comments um, and check out my Patreon page. I love all of you guys. Take it easy. Bye.